been a while. It's been far too long. All right, so I am going to kick this off with uh, turbochargers. I have a fleece cheetah. I like the fleece cheetah. It's a great turbocharger. It is great for towing. It is great for a factory emission system. It is great for mostly whatever a lot of guys want to do. However, I wanted something different. I like to change things. I like to fiddle with my truck to get to certain different power levels that I want to work up in increments. I want to go with a second gen swap. I know it's what a lot of guys do. I looked into a bunch of different guys that make them. I thought about making my own kit, but I'm not a great welder and I wanted something that does my truck justice. And after looking at Phillips Fab, is one of the nicest kits I have seen. I really liked the attention to detail. I saw consistency on what I saw. And again, it was all online. And so I just started chatting with him. And uh, I'm up in Canada, and I think pretty much everything he's done is in the States. And I said, let's do it. And here we are. I'm gonna show you what I got going on right now. Banks, Ram air intake, Fleece Cheetah, your typical off-road application going on here with your uh, stock manifold. Uh, this here is from my Webasto, you can see from my heater hose. And then the Fleece Cheetah is down there. I'm gonna change a lot of stuff in this area. <clears throat> now, going on to, this is the Phillips Fab Kit. And I did it in a black Rockstar Sparkle, they call it. It's all powder coated. It's all stainless. They do a really nice job. Or he did a really nice job, I should say. He does all the fab work himself. And then he sends it out for powder coating. The welds are immaculate, to say the least. And then I have it paired with a Steed Speed. I have it paired, I say that like it's wine tasting, but. I got a seed speed for it, and then I have a S467 uh, force injections turbo that uh, I want to go with it. I wasn't sure what an S467 was going to be like in our climate, um, being 4,000 feet in altitude, but I'm going to see. Uh, I did spec the it with a 90 AR housing, and I think that will help. But all the boots, what his. Uh, oil feed and oil drain lines comes with a spacer for the manifold because it is a high-rise second-gen setup so the manifold will be flipped up this way and the turbo will sit right there looking all nice and pretty I'm gonna put you guys probably on a time-lapse so you can dig into what I'm doing
heck of a hot night tonight, but we got it all stripped down. It took a couple hours, but took my time. Just kind of went through where I want to reorganize some of the coolant lines, especially for my Obasto. Uh, got her stripped down. I'll give you a little show here. Covered it up. Overnight, we'll get started on cleaning gasket mating surfaces. Sheet out, manifold out, oil drain, downpipe, all that. Only thing I didn't pull out was this guy here. This coolant line, I believe, is a return. Um, I need to get a plug for back in there. I don't have that yet, so I'll probably do that in the morning. Day two, we are going to get the second gen swap installed. Been making sure I have all the parts that I need here. This is for where your coolant standpipe is. This is from Fleece. And then I got a that goes to GIC and then I got a GIC 25845. That's gonna go to my coolant return and Obasto. I got the kind of like the fleece stainless kit, but not $300. This is like 60 bucks Canadian off eBay. It's black anodized, it's got your 12 point exhaust studs for the manifold, so we'll try that out. An array of brass for my coolant return. Uh, I got uh, a couple 90s and more brass and then if you remember i was stating that i needed to change that plug back there i pulled it out this morning and this is what that fitting looks like which goes to like a banjo as a coolant i don't know if it's supply or return i feel like it would be supply but it's at the bottom which makes me think it's return i feel like everything's going to return back to there um so I got a couple different fittings that I went through my toolbox at work and I found an ORB that can work for that and that's pretty much what I got going on for that. A couple studs longer, I need a bit longer for, oh a bagel just showed up for me, breakfast. A bit longer studs than what comes with Steed Speed because I'm running a the spacer and I'm running the spacer because I have to get the turbo a little higher up otherwise that housing is gonna make contact so I got a couple things here that we're we're going through making sure that we get everything in place as we need it the coolant I'm gonna route it probably in the back side and here I want to tag into here I don't really want to cut and hack this too much I don't have any one inch hose here, so I kind of got to utilize it. I don't know if the grid heater relay, I'm going to have to move that. There's a few things that I'm moving in and around about. I got to see how that boost pipe is routed. Also adapting the exhaust. I have four to five inch. I should have had Phillips Fab make the five inch, but I decided after and I was like, ah, screw it. It's underneath the truck noise in those. Big regrets. Because that is a piece of art. Other than that, I got a few other things, just uh, like this to kind of help support where I'm putting some of the coolant hoses. We have these little clamps, that's one half, and that's the other half, and they have set screws, and they'll just hold it, and then I can kind of just put it wherever I want. So there's some, there's some little stuff to just make things organized really nice that's kind of what i'm working on right now i can't wait to get this installed the color is just insane it's just got that deep metal flake which i want to black to tie everything in because as you can tell my truck is very much like black and gray i don't have much color besides the red G56 back there, which is pretty filthy. We'll throw you on a time lapse, see where we go, and uh, see how the install is.
just a few more things to button up. I'm going to run it and make sure everything looks okay, isn't leaking. Then I'll get the intake set up on. A few things. This used to be sitting here. I relocated up top. Um, coolant lines. If you can see, get that light. There's that GIC fitting down there. It is extremely close to the oil filter, and then it goes from a JSC 90 to a 45, and then that coolant hose comes to the T for my heater hose, and then that goes up to my reservoir, and then I ran that heater hose. I'm going to tuck it all up into what you can see here is my setup for my Wabasto. So my Wabasto is down in there and then it's a one-way check valve so when the Wabasto is running it'll pull coolant and when it's not it'll go directly through the heater core. Okay let's see what we got going on there and then the downpipe everything's hooked up to the five inch exhaust. It's a little little rough but we got it and then for the AC line I tweaked it just a touch but there's no rubbing it's close but there is absolutely no rubbing the kit is built really well everything lined up really good oil feed line so I had to get a plug for the oil feed line there I have one in my toolbox at work I pulled the pipe thread out on the top we got the oil drain line down there as well but we're making progress the temporary crankcase breather I put on an ISB valve cover that I painted black but uh, I need to do something different for the breather so <clears throat> I'll do that because I don't like that little filter this is gonna wreak havoc I know that a little bit of heat tape I cut I cut along there cut along here put some heat tape on I don't know if this stuff's actually gonna do anything but I got a heat blanket I'll put that on after and I'm going to maybe wrap this a little bit more I don't know yet we'll see I don't want to get too carried away gotta clean all this all up underneath and get everything secured I mostly just want to run it make sure I don't have leaks before I start putting any fenders on
wrap up this install. S467 works phenomenal on this on these 6.7 Cummins. I was worried with the altitude, as I mentioned earlier, being at 4,000 feet here in Alberta. But with some revisions of tuning, going to a low boost fueling, it has worked well. Temperatures are in well within range. Truck drives amazing. And it sounds incredible. The Fleece Cheetah worked really well, but I was running a AFR tune on it. It just wouldn't work well, obviously, for VGT to the S467, but this is working. The whole combination of everything here is working really, really good. So I'm super happy. If you are looking for a turbo setup similar to this, honestly, reach out to Philip with Philips Fab. Awesome customer service, awesome communication, everything from just general discussion, inquiries about the setup to him actually building it, sharing teaser pictures, the way he shipped everything. It was wrapped up so well. Attention to detail on every single matter with this thing and it shows at the end result. And honestly, I think it's the best looking kit on the market for, for this. If you want the high mount, I want the high mount. I think it, I like the aesthetics of it. I like, I just like everything about it. I just think this is how, when you pop the hood on 6.7 Cummins, this here looks A-OK -okay to me. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up guys. Again, thanks for coming along this time. It's been, it's been a cool install, definitely. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I'm super happy with how this truck drives and how it looks. So I feel like I got the total package here and I'm stoked to keep on using it for many more miles. Thanks guys. And I'll catch you next time.